Good morning, Derek Barnett. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. Where are you these days, in Niagara or in Prince Edward County? I am in Niagara today. I live down here, so uh, and travel back and forth to uh, to the county as needed. Yes. Maybe tell people a little bit about um, your two uh, main uh, jobs there, one in Prince Edward County, one in Niagara. Yeah, the one in Prince Edward County, I... Uh, I wine, make, make wines at uh, Carlo Estates uh, in, in Wellington. I've been doing that for the past five, six vintages. Um, so this was sort of started after, after uh, Laley had been sold and uh, uh, was approached by Sherry to, to help out. So, and then the gig in, uh, in Niagara is my own label. It's Melville Wines. I've been doing that also for, uh, for six vintages now. And, uh, having fun making wine for myself and, uh, and, and selling as best we can during the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, yep. It's been challenging. I, I can, I appreciate um, that, you know, most of wineries uh, in Ontario are um, smaller operations and uh, depend on people coming to them to taste the wines and also on restaurants that have been closed a lot. Yeah, that's been one of my biggest uh, issues is with, without selling wine to restaurants. Um, sort of being a virtual winery, um, it's always uh, there's always walk-in traffic to the to the host winery where we are. But I, it's um, I, I did a lot of restaurant uh, sales over the years, and so that has been a bit of a struggle. Obviously, give us a little you know snapshot of your background. I, I understand this is 2021 is a anniversary year for you in Ontario? Um, not quite. Uh, uh, I thought you came to Ontario or started making wine, I guess, in 1991. Right. So, okay, yes. So, yeah, in 90, exactly, exactly. Yes. So that, that is an anniversary year. You're right. <laughs> 30 years. That's uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, it's kept me out of mischief, as they would say. <laughs> and... And what prompted you to start up your own winery? Now, you're, you don't have a vineyard per se, but you are uh, able to make your own wines. Yeah. I... Gray hairs are showing a little bit like, you know, as we get a little bit older, uh, uh, starting a, uh, a virtual winery seemed a little more appropriate. Um, so uh, I began looking around, uh, uh, talking to, to friends and neighbors and uh, what, where we could go. And um, I had thought about making my own label a long while ago. Uh, so this was not something that, that came uh, out of left field. We had talked about it, my wife and I, um, for, for quite some time. So in 2015, um, the opportunity came about and uh, so... Um, it made sense for me to, 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 to go where I'd been also purchasing a few grapes from, uh, uh, from vineyards uh, during my tenure at Lely. And uh, um, so I, I had bought a lot of good Sauvignon Blanc grapes uh, from um, the Lezac Vineyard uh, at Legends Estates. And uh, they had some space that they was going to, uh, could allow me to go in and do my work there. And so that's where we went. And uh, um, it was just something I wanted to do um, to continue what well, I, it's all the last 30 years, like, you know, it's yeah. It, it, those relationships that you develop uh, as a winemaker. Um, I think all of that comes into play more than people realize with uh, uh, the Ontario's wine industry. There's a lot of great growers who are growing grapes and then wineries like yours that depend on those grapes to make some great wine. For sure, there's a lot of great grapes in Ontario, and uh, and as you say, over the years you uh, you build up relationships with people, and uh, um, they're easy to continue if you have good relationships. So it, it worked out pretty well. Well, June is all about rosé. Uh, it is the start of the summer season. Rosés are becoming very popular, and Ontario is making some really lovely ones, including your Meldville rosé. Um, and the Syrah is a, the grape you make it from. Tell us a little bit about that grape. It's not really a common one in Ontario. I make, I make two. So uh, Cabernet Franc is, is I, I also make as a rosé and then the Syrah. Um, I've loved working with Syrah grapes over the last, I guess the first year was maybe 20, 
2001, I think we started uh, with that. And uh, I just love growing the grape. I mean, obviously, it's not something that 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 is a dominant grape variety in Ontario. We we struggle with uh, winter damage, and uh, um, so I mean, it's not planted everywhere. It needs that it needs. It's very site specific. Um, but I just love the flavors that come from Syrah. We make obviously uh, red wine uh, as well as uh, rosé. And 2019 was really the first vintage that I had um, ventured into making rosé uh, with the Syrah grapes. It was a tougher vintage. It was wet. It was uh, was cool. And uh, um, I felt that the Syrah that we had coming in was uh, was maybe going to make a fun a fun rosé. So that's what we did. Um, so. A lot of the similar flavors. I mean, it's got a lot of white pepper. It's uh, it's got some nice uh, bright red fruit, but um, it has a lot of the similar characters uh, that we will find in in the red wine. And that um, that pepper aroma is kind of what Syrah, or as the Australians call it, Shiraz. Um, that's that's what it's kind of known for. Is one of its characteristics. Is that is that kind of peppery? Yeah, cooler varieties, cooler areas for growing the variety. Uh, there's a lot more of that pepper note. I find anyway, it's more distinctive um, in the cooler areas. Mm -hmm. You have a bottle there. Let's let's um, remind people which one there. Yeah, there it is. So How it, it produces a a, a, a rosé. There's this. Has a little more depth of color. It's not a the, a, the on the lighter style of, of color that everybody's seen a, to moving their uh, their rosés to. Um, so that's quite a, a deep uh, red color, um, which I kind of like. It's uh, it's it's not electric red or or, or pink. It's just it, it has a just a normal I think depth of uh, uh, of color. I uh, what I was going to say about it. It's, it I, I love I it, love the color but, too. Yeah. And I love seeing the range of colors that people select for their rosés. Remind us a little bit about where that color comes from, a little bit of the winemaking um, uh, science that uh, and techniques that are going to making rosé. Well, this, this is hand harvested fruit and it was um, uh, immediately pressed after, uh, crushed and, 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 and distemmed and pressed after, uh, after harvest. Um, so we leave it on the skins for um, a few hours. We, this was like almost four hours before we put it into the into the press and and, and, and pressed it. So we, we get a little bit of color out of the skins, uh, press it off, and then uh, um, we get away. This I, one of the reasons there's a little more depth of color here right, is because I think we pressed it right uh, at the time of harvest without uh, without adding anything back. We just you get a little more intensity from uh, from that. And if you were making red wine, how many hours would it spend on the skins? Oh, depending on the year, anything up to like 28 days before uh, we would we would press it off. Uh, after the ferment is finished, we we allow the uh, the skins to settle and uh, we taste it every day. And and when we get to that point where we think we need to press it off, we press it off. Uh, I don't think I've taken Syrah longer than 28 days. So, and that would be a nice dark. Uh, yes. purple color yeah yeah, yeah. for sure um, so just four hours and you get that lovely rosé color yep and in, and in 19 it was a little easier in in uh, in 2020 which was a really hot year we had a lot more uh, smaller berries and uh, we ended up um, with the rosé having to be much less uh, uh, skin contact almost uh, sorry uh, it happens. It happens this way, but not, not often. Uh, I can't even turn it off. Um, so much less, uh, much less time. It was almost uh, into the press and out again. I mean, it was uh, there was no real timing uh, because the, the the skins were already soft and uh, allowing us to, to extract color. So um, uh, it just went through the press almost like a white wine. Um, so, but we still have a lot of intensity of color from them. And then fermentation happens after you press the juice. Yep. Press the Cold grapes. settle the wine um, or, the, or the juice and uh, rack it from the uh, from the sediment. And then uh, uh, for me, it's uh, um, picking that that yeast that we use for most of the time. It's not naturally fermented, and, uh, and allowing it to to ferment in a coolest temperature the, that we can we can keep it at to, uh, but also to encourage the ferment to continue on. 
And this is a nice crisp dry rosé. Why, why do you choose to make dry as opposed to sweet rosés? I just, for me, it's what I like to drink. So I guess we'll start with that. Um, I also feel that, uh, that they're better suited to food. Um, so we would drink this, uh, you know, with, with light affair. Um, mm -hmm. um, it's wonderful uh, uh, with, with creamy dishes as well. Um, there's a tiny bit of residual sugar, but it would still be classed as dry wine. Um, so the balance is, uh, is there. There's um, some nice texture on the, on the mid palate too, which again, um, makes, makes it have a much richer feeler than it really does and a perception of sweetness. And then always with Syrah, there's that sort of wonderful citrusy finish to the, to the, to the wine and uh, which we often talk about it tasting and smelling with a little bit of uh, pink grapefruit or, or blood orange. Uh, it has that sort of a uh, little bit of a zippy red red feel to it. And that's what makes it such a beautiful summer wine because you want something almost, I wouldn't say it's, you know, it's quenching. It's It uh, makes your mouth water as opposed to drying it out like a red wine does. Exactly. So I get to drink a little more, right? And that's the whole thing to keep it refreshing. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the whole thing. And, and a nice chilled glass of that, it, you know, goes beautiful with, uh, salads. Uh, do you have a favorite salad you like to have it with or favorite I mean, summer food? I often find Caesar really hard to drink, to, to find a wine to pair it with because I do like garlic. Um, this is really, uh, I love, I love uh, drinking this with a, uh, the big Caesar salad. That's a, that's a good one. And it's got that creaminess. So the, the acidity in the wine kind of cleanses your mouth in between bites, I would think. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I've had a, a I've, I think, one of yours and a couple of other rosés with a nice um, rosé pasta as well. You know, where you make a, a lighter rosé sauce. It's got some cream in it, but it's got that tomato acid as well. Yep. Uh, really nice with rosé wines. Which is really hard to balance. The, the acid in tomatoes uh, can sometimes be quite... Uh, quite tart and and you're going to end up uh, having it dominate the wine so uh, you need you need the weight in the wine to, to sort of counteract that yeah yeah and smoked salmon is another one I like with uh, yes. rosés yes for sure not something with smoked salmon little finger bites or something like that right yeah well that's great I, uh, I just uh, wanted to show you because we talked earlier in this spring um, for our Savvy Inside Scoop, and we just received our, our new papers recently. So there you are on the tractor. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so we'll send you some copies of that. Cool. I don't get to spend as much time on a tractor as I used to. I, uh, that, was a, that was a great day for me up at Carlo. It was, um, uh, I spent all day on the tractor. Uh, it was wonderful. <laughs> being in the vineyard, yeah, is, is totally different than being in the winery, I'm guessing. You bet, you bet. Yeah, well, enjoy your summer and uh, I hope things are getting back to normal for you and all the other Ontario wineries that uh, need some of that support to get uh, get things rolling again. You bet. It, I, today's the day, right? So uh, we begin uh, the long trek. But anyway, we will, uh, we will have a great summer. Uh, I'm sure we will. Thanks very much, Derek, for talking with us and uh, thanks for making such a great rosé. Thank you very much. Take care.